Hello everybody and welcome back to the Newbie's Guide to the Galaxy. Well, I've been brought a request here directly from a friend of mine who's playing on PS4. Commander Milloraptor, this one's for you, mate. Now, you recently just bought a dolphin, so you asked me to tell you how best to outfit it. So I figured I'd share it with the world instead of just you, because this ship, from what I've had a look at, it's, um... Well, it's a challenge, really. Because it has somewhat limited capabilities with regards to its hard points, it's not the best. There's a reason that it is a bargain basement sort of ship for the class of its type. It's a really good value ship, and I'm not going to try and cover that up. It's a brilliant ship for what it does and can earn you an absolute fortune very quickly. You just need to be careful not to cross the wrong people when doing your job. In other words, try not to crash it too much if you're ferrying around passengers, because that will piss off the wrong people. The wrong people will then proceed to keep killing you, and then the ball just keeps rolling down that path. But at the end of the day, though, a dolphin is quite a nice little passenger liner. It looks kind of a bit like a futuristic bus. I guess that's kind of the price tag you're looking at. It's not exactly a luxury yacht at the end of the day. But, yeah. Um... I'm basically going to build it from the ground up here, covering pretty much every aspect, the core internal, the optional internals, some of the utility mounts that may be useful for this, and the hard points, to the best of my ability. Now, before I actually get into it today, there's a certain area here that I'm wanting to refer people to, which is Nijima Gateway, fans of Persona 5 will have no problem remembering that. But, yeah, the reason that I'm directing you to Nijima Gateway, and you're about to see why, is because A, it has a good shipyard, B, it has a ridiculously good collection of weapons and other some such for its outfitting, it has a ridiculously broad range, but also the optional internal parts first. Obviously, the starter ones aren't great, but if I just go into the shield generators, for a start, where are they here? Shield generators will be down near the bottom, there they are. Nijima Gateway, top grade shield generator. First step, buy up, get rid of the old module, throw in the better one. Right? Best shield generator. And she was, you've got the maximum protection while minimizing a risk to passenger satisfaction and, you know, generally making your life easier. Now, second to that, is a core internal, which is your power plant, which you will want to have the very best of. Because the power plant that is stock in this thing doesn't have much, as you can see, the max is 10.4 megawatts, which is not great considering I'm already at 9.12 and I haven't even added in my weapons or anything yet. So, yeah, they've got a 4B power plant. It's not the best. Could have sworn they had 4A last time I was here, but hey-ho. The 4B, it should be good enough to do what I need it to do, but I will hold off until I find a 4A because I want to build this to be a long-term thing. The frameshift drive, though, I'm certain I can get a 4A, so I will be throwing that in right now. Just simply straight out of it. Right. Yep, sell the old module, throw that in. Now, the rebuy cost on this thing's going to skyrocket because it's kind of not... well... It's a cheapish. It's cheap enough as a ship, yes, but the outfitting costs are astronomical, as they are with pretty much every ship. But the things that you want on this, being a passenger liner, are pretty much a power plant, being A grade, because you need to power passenger cabins, which take a lot of power. You need a good frame shift drive, because you'll be carrying people sometimes thousands of light years, and you will want to be able to jump a ridiculous distance quickly and well the rest of it is all as it is the power plant kind of bugs me a little i may have to upgrade before i can even deploy hard points with this thing but i'll find another place that'll do an a grade power plant no problem there's always one close to hand and if ever i'm in doubt i always know a place that'll do them anywhere that's a high-tech station without fitting does tend to have them so it shouldn't be too hard to find as I say, this is why I'm wanting to share Nijima Gateway, because it has a good selection of just everything, really. I mean, the power plant there, yeah, it's a little bit of a letdown, they've only got B grade, but at the end of the day, if you, you know, if you're wanting to build a ship on a budget, that's fine. But, always try and build it with A grade parts where you can. 
This is why I always say you want to save up about three times, four times the value of the ship to get a base build out, and then build on that until you've got about ten times your ship's value. Then maybe look at buying the next step up. It's not a cheap thing if you want a long-term investment, but if you just want some kind of cheap, useless piece of crap to move from one ship to another or something, it's kind of fine. It all depends what you want to build them for. Different builds work in different ways. Please feel free to try anything, not just what I'm recommending here, but solid A-grades are A-grades for a reason. Now, with the ship here, I've got everything I need outfitted in it at the moment. What I would recommend is probably stripping out the cargo racks for something potentially more useful. So I'd keep around 12 cargo space just because... Well, actually, you know... Hmm. Nah, you know what? No, I wouldn't. I'd, I'd strip this out fully from cargo racks and just throw in passenger cabins. The... If memory serves, actually, I'm just going to go and check on this. Um, passenger cabins. No, wait, these don't actually have an impact on your power output. I'm uh, actually surprised. Hmm, looks like I might be able to outfit this baby on a basic power plant after all. <laughs> Holy crap, that'd be entertaining. Without having to upgrade the power plant. This would be a really cheap job in comparison. But, um, yeah, the shield generator. I think for the weapons, I'm probably going to need a better power plant. But if I drop both the pulse lasers first, see what power we're at, and then see if we can maybe cut a corner with this. If I don't necessarily need a better power plant, then I might not go with one. But there are some things I will have to cut from the build I had in mind. Now, with a dolphin, I'll just quickly back out here. The two hard points, once it loads, there we go. The two hard points that are on your ship are on the left and right side. With very limited vision as they're on the little side wings. It's uh, a bit of a tricky one really because your only real combat capability is a dead in front target which isn't really moving very quickly. Um, with this you're probably not going to come across this too often because this ship's not very mobile and well flanking it and getting around it with a superiorly mobile ship like an eagle is quite easy. It's not an ideal ship for combat. This thing is pretty much a fight and flight. You pretty much have to, you know, suppress the opponent while escaping them, not combat them directly. You might get away with killing a couple of sidewinders, maybe a cobra in this thing if you've kitted it for combat. But it's really, really just a sitting duck in a fight. This thing is not built to do any of that whatsoever. But what I would recommend is potentially having a look at burst lasers, beam lasers, or something along those lines. Generally, these things are pretty much useless with uh, ships like this. But as I say, you don't need a, you don't need a weapon that's going to be really, really useful. I mean, you can, if you really want, go with a gimbaled multi cannon or something on the front. But I would heavily recommend, and I mean this, heavily recommend potentially a turreted gun. Turreted guns have really good mounts that are very, very sophisticated in design and quite actually useful for ships that don't necessarily have the best mobility as turrets can track the targets you've told them to shoot at for a while. The downside of having a weapon with ammo on this thing is that it's obviously, as I say, not built for combat. You're probably not going to get into it all too often, but you don't want to be spending unnecessary credits on self-defense where you can skimp if you're not going to aim for the kill. There's not much point in investing in munitions for killing. I mean, you can invest in mines, I guess. That would be, you know, a good bet. But the risk there is obviously hitting yourself with a mine. You don't want to do that after all, do you? But for the time being, I would say what's the best bet here is probably these. The power draw is a bit much, I'll admit, because turret and guns have, you know, quite a bit. But as you can see, the fixed and gimbaled mounted ones take up actually more power than the turreted. The turreted guns, albeit aren't the best here, are, they are what I am going to fit to this. Pretty much anything would go. I'd just simply say burst lasers because, well... Actually, hang on a minute, they look like they might be different than what I've actually read about. They look like they're more centred on the central hull. 
If so, they may be a little bit better than what I thought, but... Well, at any rate, I've got them fitted and kitted. Two guns, that's all you get. Those burst lasers obviously now take me over my power limit, which is less than ideal. I'm at 10.5 megawatts, which will short-circuit my ship if I deploy them. Meaning that I'll go into emergency life support until I retract hard points. Not only that, but they won't be able to fire, so I will need to get a better power plant. Thought that might be the case with this, and kind of expected as much. Guess I'm going to have to have a look around to see if I can find one. There is one thing that I forgot about today though, and that mainly is the utility mounts. Now you get a surprising amount of utility mounts on this thing, considering you're not going to be building it for combat. What I would say is probably best is to examine the ship carefully, see where your hard points are, so they're on the top, that's along the bottom. So, I would say these are more vulnerable to gunfire. So you probably want their shield boosters, because if they get damaged after your shields go down, you're probably going to die anyway. Or, you've got a bit more of a chance to get away if you protect what I would put here. Which is this, a chaff launcher. Ruins all gimbaled guns and turret mounted devices because it makes them lose lock. It's a fairly basic little tool that you get given, but it is something you would invest in and should invest in on a ship like this. You're going to need the defences. Now along the top, as what I said earlier, shield boosters. We have air grade ones here that are going to basically overdrive my ship completely and kill it. That will be something I will put on my ship later on. It's another half a million, and I do need a power plant. So, hey, tell you what. Let's have a bit of fun with this, shall we? I'm in here now anyway. So, let me launch this thing. Let's go for the maiden voyage. Let's find somewhere we can actually go with this. Basic discovery scanner. And the chaff launcher. Never hesitate to have both primary guns on a dolphin set to the same fire rate, or same fire command. Basically primary or secondary, you don't really need to overthink how you're going to lay out the guns on this thing. As I said, they're not really used for anything other than defense, and I can't imagine they'd be a particularly huge drain on your power. Okay, so Nijima Gateway was really good of a place to go. Let's have a look at the galaxy map and see what other kind of things we've got around us. And then have a look where I can go to potentially get a better power plant. Now as you may know, I've bookmarked Nijima Gateway because I think that's going to be a great place to go for future outfitting. Right then. Now I'm on good terms with Flesinger City. So, mm -hmm. do I have any outstanding transactions? No. Might try ferrying someone out of here. Take them back to my Cobra. Nijima Gateway has that one little hole to fill, which is a little unfortunate. The power plant being the only thing it misses, though, means that it is a part that is easily later integratable, as I've proved here. It does kind of gimp you a little, because it sort of stops you from being able to do stuff, but... And here we are. Schlesinger City. After about... <laughs> 50 minutes for me, and probably all of about, what, two minutes since I left the station for you? Thank you, I thought you were going to crash there for a moment. Welcome to the Imperial Station. Simply the best, really. You want to steal song lyrics that obviously? That's a new advertising campaign for them, though. Pretty sure I've not seen that one before. Now. Power. Ah, the 4A power plant. Tis here! And it is very powerful. Now then. Let's just cram one of these into my ship. Basically bankrupting myself. And we're all good. 
I think I've got all the parts I need. Aside from the utility mounts. But I've got the chaff launcher. Do they have the shield boosters here? The A-grade ones? Yes, they do. Can I... You know... Slap a shield booster on my ship? And then... You know... Slap another shield booster on my ship? Hey! There you go! Quite an expensive build, I think you'll agree. But, um... Yeah. This ship has the potential to make you quite a lot of money. So... Don't waste too much time on thinking of the costs to build a good one. Just think of the rewards it'll, you know, return you over a couple of days of play. I've spent, what, like... God, how much have I spent on this? 1.3 million on the ship itself. And about 5.5 mil on doing it up. So, all in. All in at the minute, quote-unquote. Call it about 7 mil, so I'd say you're probably looking at around 8 mil just to get it up to speed. And that's if you're going to fully kit it out with um, the, what you call it, passenger lounges. Which I am going to do, I believe. It's the best way forward. So, I'm going to leave this place. Now that I've got a power plant in it and some shield boosters, I'm going to go back to my galaxy map. And then I'm going to fly back to Nijima Gateway. And here we are. Nijima Gateway. Dropped a little bit far off. Doesn't matter though. I'll get there. Eventually. What the hell? I'm 16 kilometers away? How did I drop so far off? Well, at least I can see the door from here. Anyway. 10k, 9k, 8k. Docking distance. Approval granted. Set course for landing pad 3 4. Thank you. Just have a nice casual flight in. And then let's get the final upgrades to the ship done. Well, the artificial gravity kind of threw me off a bit there. Alright. Back at Nijima Gateway. Let's round out this build after an hour of flight for me and all of about 25 minutes for you guys. God help you if you decided to watch this live. I wonder what other ships are in the shipyard here. Just while I'm waiting. Ooh, ooh, discount condors. Beluga liners, type nines, orcas, asps, vultures. Holy shit, this place has something for everybody. The only thing that it's missing is a good sort of middle of the line half mil ship, really. It goes from basic, like quite cheap fighters to just quite expensive ships overall, really. Like going straight from 142 grand to 1.3 million is a kind of a hike. Anyway, what I came here to do is to finish this off. So, as. As I said before, I want that. 
moved. And swapped with that. That's done. A 2E cargo rack. Sell it because I don't want it. Get my money back for that. Optional. No, I don't want to buy back, thank you. I would rather put something new in here. With this new item being a passenger cabin. Because, you know, I want one. A 4C passenger cabin for first class. 4D for business class. Cabin capacity 3 first class. Damn, that's kind of expensive though. But hey, it's a first class passenger cabin. Let's lob it in. It's stupidly heavy and reduces my jump range, but you know, it's fine. That can just be tossed out because it's a bit useless. This, again, can be tossed out because it's a bit useless. And, well, let's have a look at what we've got here, shall we? Passenger cabins, economy, business class. See, a business class cabin for 26 grand. It's business class. I can read more in a business class. Hmm. Doesn't tell you which order they go in, but I'm assuming first class is the most expensive, because business class will be like, you know, quite good, but passenger cabins, economy class cabin, cabin capacity two. Is it really even worth having these capacities in if they're only two capacity? Hmm. You know what? I almost overlooked this, actually. A good fuel scoop on a long-distance cruise liner is almost a quarter stone of what you would do. So let's lock that in. And, uh, what else have we got here? Stellar body scanners, refineries, shield cell banks, module and hull reinforcements, fuel tanks, docking computer collection, cargo, field maintenance. A reserve fuel tank could be quite useful. You know, just for the, like, extra four tons of fuel you can get. But I'm going to hold off on that because I think a basic discovery scanner would actually be quite useful. But, as I said, getting the advanced one can make all the difference in discovering some good stuff when you're out and about. So, I'm going to hold off on that and save up for that next. As for everything I've got here, I think it's pretty well kitted out. Hmm. I mean, we'll need a detailed surface scanner to go alongside it. So, yeah, let's uh, lob one of them in here. A detailed surface scanner for quarter of a mil. This is just a full-on kit out, so this is a, like a full-on finished build now. So this is by far probably aiming for the end game bar one part, which is the basic discovery scanner, which is going to require another one and a half mil investment. But yeah, that's pretty much how you build a dolphin from start to finish on a top of the line, top of the range. Hope this one's helped everyone out. If anyone has another ship they'd ideally like me to build, submit a suggestion in the comments below. Or... As I said, if you want to play with me in previous videos, drop me a message. Just make sure to mention you've actually seen my YouTube videos or something, because if you just drop me a random message saying, like, let's play Elite Dangerous, I have no idea who you are. So make sure to give a bit of an explanation, I. And uh, last of all, the name My Cobra is still going. Never got really much of a response on that. So, feel free to name it. This thing, though, I don't know what I'm going to name it, but I'll think of one myself. If anyone has any ideas, though, feel free to post them, and I might consider them. Remember, just keep it PC. Anyway. I'm going to call it a day for this one. Hopefully this one helped you out, Milliraptor. If not, get back to me. Anyway. Ciao for now, everybody. I'll see you later.